morning. Today I'm dressed in honor of Jean Moulin. Jean Moulin, to you uninitiated, is a legend of the French Resistance. He's become an icon in French history. His name, Jean Moulin, is the most common name for French primary schools. Over there behind me, directly across the bay, the Villefranche, Villefranche-sur-Mer, is one of many towns which commemorate the plaque and the statue of Jean Moulin, dressed in his traditional fedora, and, like me, in honor of Jean, with a scarf. Reputedly, he always wore his scarf because for the first time he was captured by the Nazis, he attempted suicide to try to cut his own throat. That's some very severe scars, as you can well imagine. I don't know if you tried it yourself, it's dodgy business. So Jean Milan continued to wear a scarf at all times and his iconic fedora. We're standing here actually below the bay of Esplan... Almadora. Just immediately here and immediately below us. Beautiful little bay of Espalmadora. Espalmadora being a term of the engraver. But you'll notice beyond a large bay, which is the roadstead of Villefranche. The roadstead is captured by on my left, the Cap the Rat. On your left, I beg your pardon. It's the Cap the Rat. And over on your right, my left, to the far side where Villefranche, the town sits, Cap de Nice, because actually, over in the far end there, that's technically part of the city of Nice. It begins right there, and just over the top of that hill, the great metropolis of Nice spreads out before you. This roadstead actually is over 350 feet deep at the entrance, and believe it or not, this was once the home. Mediterranean home temporarily of the United States 7th Fleet of all things and also of the French Navy from time to time because of its deep water harbor and of course today in the summer it would be very common to see very very large Mediterranean cruise ships one or two or even three at a time parked right there. We're here now in March. God knows what it's like when four, five, six thousand tourists descend on poor little Villefranche sur mer and the beautiful Jean Cap Ferrat. The Cap is rather notorious and it was the playground in the Belle Epoque era of Leopold II of Belgium. Leopold was not a very nice fellow. Second king of the Belgians, he essentially somehow managed to set up the Congo, Republic of Congo, as his own personal domain. He made an absolute fortune in ivory and later in rubber. It's reputedly over four, five, six million people died in the plantation. Nobody's quite sure, actually. But he was the real founder of the French Mediterranean as we know it, building an enormous palace here, now a hotel, and another enormous one way off in the distance. You can't see it on the Cap Antibes, where actually we used to live not so long ago. Antibes being the other side of the Bay of Naples. I know it's terribly confusing. Now, this is definitely not David Attenborough because I can assure you he wasn't going to discuss the fact that apart from Leopold, the other such people who have lived on the cap include the Duke of Windsor, Somerset Maugham, Paul Hamlin, the well-known British Jewish multimillionaire publisher, Berezovsky, one of the Russian oligarchs in the post era who actually eventually hung himself in London, not the one who got poisoned, another one. Today it includes Andrew Lloyd Webber, Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, and Bono. We haven't seen them in the local grocery store or in the little bar across the way there in Villefranche, so I don't know what they do for entertainment or how they get their food. They certainly don't shop themselves because we haven't seen them. It's a tricky business because most of these enormous villas have 20, 30 foot high gates and bloody great rings all around them. You can't see a bloody thing. except. If you look up here, often, if you're lucky enough, way, way up above, to see some of these villas. And often when we're up there, of course, you can look 
down on the villas and we see them very easily. So even though when you're walking beside them as the neighbour they seem private, it's surprising the number of views you can get here if you want to do a little bit of villa spotting. So again, this is not Jean Moulin. I would not for one minute want to take his name in vain. One of the real heroes of France, an iconic name of the French rest resistance. He resisted all torture, having been captured by the Nazis a second time. God knows what they did to him, nobody quite knows, but he never ever gave away any secrets. He finally died, they believe, at the hands of Franz Barbie. You'll know of him, the butcher of Lyon in the Vichy government. And that's when Moulin supposedly was finally murdered. This is not David Frost, and it's definitely not David Attenborough. From Villefranche-sur-Mer, from the Cap Ferrat, from the beautiful roadstead of Villefranche, from the heart of the French Riviera, adieu.